What is up guys, it's your boy DJ Rick Webb. We back at it again with another gig log. This gig log is gonna consist of two weddings back to back. We're doing a wedding today, it's Saturday. We're gonna do a wedding tomorrow, Sunday, both at the same venue, which is Friends Farm. As you guys know, we do a lot of weddings out there because we're on the all-inclusive package. So, your boys out there for two back-to-back -back weddings here in November, which means it's gonna be freaking cold. If you guys remember the weddings from last year we did in November out there, they were freaking cold. Today's gonna be freaking cold. But we're, we got a pretty dope setup today. We're gonna be doing string bulb lighting. We're gonna be doing a monogram. But tomorrow we're just gonna be doing string bulb lighting, no monogram. But uh, we're gonna be testing out a new sound system. So stay tuned for that. This is gonna be my new wedding specific sound system for like crowds of 150 and less, maybe 200, but probably 150 and less. So let's get down to the garage to load up. We load everything in the back of the truck because we're uh, we're going out the friend's farm and you guys know it's hard as hell to get a trailer down there But we need the trailer because we are doing string bulb lighting and for anyone that thinks that string bulb lighting is really hard to do This is literally all we need We have three totes which is more than what we need one has got all of our cables The other two are like full of the glass string bulbs. We got our base plates and we got a pole now obviously we get to take advantage of trees to be able to attach to a friend's farm but if you weren't doing trees all you need to do is bring more poles and bring more bases and it literally takes up like no room in your trailer so if you guys want to get in the string bulb lighting let me know i can film some videos show you guys how to make some money doing string bulb lighting leave it down in the comment section below this is uh filming on the new canon g7 at mark three uh, they finally upgraded the firmware so the autofocus is good. I, I don't know about the coloring though. The coloring seems off to me. It might just be the screen. I don't know. But um, yeah, we're going to be on the road to Friends Farm, but we're going to stop at Walmart for hand warmers. Yeah. We have returned to Friends Farm. Okay, stop. Got some Wendy's today. We're going to get started on uh, string bulb lighting. Same string bulb lighting that we did uh, last time. We're out here. Well, I guess that was two times ago. I don't know at this point. It actually is not too bad out right now. They got like some propane heat. Propene, yeah, propene. They got some propene heaters, and um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. We're gonna run from that tree to that pole to that tree to that tree. So you guys really want some more detail on how we do everything that we do. So here is the Georgia Expo. This is a 75-pound base plate. It has the pin in it for our pipe and drape pole. We're also going to stack some rubber weights on top of that. These are 30 pound weights. All this is Georgia Expo. So this is a slip collar pole. It'll go up 12 feet in the air. What we do is we have these clips. I will link these in the description down below. These hook in right here. And then we have these connectors right here that we can attach our cables to. Our cables have these little couplers that you just screw together to keep the table the cables nice and taut. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this cable over to that tree, wrap it around the pole and use another coupler to attach it over there and then we're going to raise it up and then we're going to clip all our string bulb lighting onto it and repeat the process going over to that tree and back and there you go there is string bulb lighting i did want to point out that other than the georgia expo poles themselves those little like clamps and uh the wire itself all that comes in a kit. It's linked in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. The main reason we run a wire and attach the bulbs to it is just because of how long these strands are. If we were doing runs that were like maybe 25 feet total or less, maybe like 20 feet, we would just run the bulbs themselves. But when you're going longer distances, the, the plugs themselves might come up undone and the bulbs fall. So you really want to use wire really in all situations but if you're doing shorter runs like 20 feet and under you can really just run the strands themselves and the, the strands themselves can support the weight so we're going to unload the truck now and move on to our reception setup as well as our ceremony setup ceremony we got the little battery powered rig so it's gonna be super quick and easy but we're gonna get started on that You guys requested that I do more videos detailing how we set up what we set up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have Drake film me setting up some of the gear. All right, guys. So you guys want to see more setup. So we're going to go now through wire. I got my XLR cables right here. Always got the Velcro ties to keep them nice and tidy. We also label them so we know what they are. Uh, Drake comes over here to the SZ. You guys know I custom built this with all the ports on the outside of my case to have all my outputs from 
DBX Driver PA2. I want to point out to you guys, you don't have to run a mixer or a drive rack to run your audio. A lot of people think that you have to get a mixer, you have to get it. You need a mixer if you have a controller that doesn't have a mixer built into it. The SZ has a dedicated mixer built into it. Basically how you know that, if the unit requires power, like the SX2, SX3, the 1000, the SZ, or the bigger controllers, you get into turntables and that, they require power because they have a dedicated mixer in them. This has a dedicated mixer, which means you can run just out of these master outputs. I can run right from the SZ to the tops. So I don't need a drive rack. I purely have a drive rack because I'm a geek and I like to have beyond absolute control over my audio. So that's why I do it. One benefit from just, even if I didn't have the drive rack, putting ports here and running just a little short XLR to the SZ, I'm not going to wear out my ports on the SZ, which are very expensive to get fixed versus this little cheap $5 port on the outside. If that breaks, that breaks. So that's what. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in this XLR to the back here. I'm gonna run it up through the actual event table itself. And I'm gonna plug it into my uh, left side. This is my left high out. And then we're gonna come over to the speaker. So this is the first time I'm using the speakers. Kalen used them last week and he told me that we had a lack of gain in the top and me and him were playing around with them in the garage. What we noticed just playing around with an, a Yamaha six channel mixer running into them was that going into the sub and then out of the sub to the top, they weren't getting a strong enough signal to be loud. So we're gonna actually do it a little bit backwards today, but tomorrow I, we'll have more time. But uh, we're gonna run into our top up here and then I'm gonna take this other XLR and I'm gonna run out of this. And and I'm gonna run down. I'm making sure I try and keep my cables as clean as possible because clean cables are king. I'm gonna tuck it down here on the back side, nice and wound up together. Ideally, you would want the same or the right length, the ideal length. Then we're gonna go into our sub and then we're gonna go along here. And because I have Velcro ties on this, you gotta plug in your power. So we're gonna plug in our power. It's cold out here, so the cables don't like to cooperate, so you kinda of just have to massage them a little bit. Plug them in here, we got our power hooked up. And since we have the Velcro ties, we can use these Velcro ties to now attach our wires to our sub poles so that we keep a nice clean look. You always wanna try and keep it nice and taut as possible and run your wires along the back of the pole. Same thing for tripods, so that way um, from the front, you can't see the wire or it's like barely hidden. So that's why you run it like that. I got the bigger tie right here from the gator pole. There we go. Nice and clean, taut wire. So now to power uh, this stuff, obviously we gotta run an extension cord to it. When I'm running stuff like this, where I got like a sub, a top, and maybe a wash FX2 up on top, we can't actually attach them to the turbo sounds. We're gonna run them in a different area tonight. But say this was like a Pure X712 up here, or a Vonta A15, or an SRX speaker, and we attach a light up there. We're gonna have three things to plug in. So I drop one of these Furman power conditioner strips. These are really nice. They're pretty. They're pretty reasonable price. You got six outlets on it. Nice surge protection, as well as some power conditioning as well. So I'm gonna drop that behind my sub or underneath my tripod with the scrim, and that's where we're gonna plug in everything. So I kind of just drop it down in here behind the sub and run over to a power outlet. Thankfully the power outlet is really close. So that's where I'm gonna plug everything into. All right guys, warping forward, also switch cameras, but um, we're all set up, we're all ready to go. So this is gonna be in a separate video. Yes, I grabbed my broken destroyed glove, but um, the monogram here, I, I made a whole entire separate video um, that's probably already out now on how to do animated and regular static monograms like this one behind me. But we're also got both of the Wash FX 2s on gravity stands at the back. So we're all set, ready to go. I need to go change and we're gonna get it rocking. If you guys didn't get the gist here, we got the animated monogram. All of my monograms are from projectorgram.com. It's really awesome. They have this uh, website that you can send to your clients that they can look for all the animated monograms that they could possibly get, but there's no pricing or anything like that. So that way uh, you're covered on pricing. You can charge what you want, but they can see all the designs and see what they want. Gator Frameworks sub poles, JBL Purex 715XLF subs, heater, heater, cables, all hosa, ADJ event table mark two, SZ case, laptop stand built into it. We already went through all this. I got a new Show Express box now. Shout out 
uh, to my boy on Instagram for hooking me up with this. So now we don't have the ginormous one here. We're just using the little tiny one right there. It made setup a lot easier and it saves a lot of room. Also, we're trying out Sennheiser Digital. Kalen's already used it out here a couple times. He says he loves it, so I'm gonna see how it is to run the wireless audio down to the LED system's mount if I go. And for anyone asking, uh, I've commented before, but the Alto Stealth system, I threw that in the trash. I think it's a piece of crap. Um, it was cutting in and out, like left and right, at both the last time they used it. So it's in the trash. We're gonna use the Sennheiser Digital now. So I'm gonna go change and we'll get you rolling here. Very, very important people, so if everyone can direct their attention basically out here to the dance floor, we're gonna get started right now. DJ, drop that track for me real quick. First off, we're gonna kick it off with Kaylee's Paris, and that is Lori and Jeff Pollen and Ethan. Following it up, we have Corey's Paris, and that is Mark and Tarina Hildreth. Give it up, give it up, clap it up. Let's move on into our wedding party real quick, real quick. DJ, hit that track, hit that track. First up, we have Lauren and Steven. Come on, make some noise, make some noise. Next, we have Michelle and Jordan. Give it up for Brittany and Douglas. Keep your hands going for Taryn and Brian. Let's make some big noise for our maid of honor, Jordan. We got a special guest here. We gotta introduce Brandon. If everyone can please, I need you to make as much noise as you possibly can. Scream, shout if you wish. And it's my honor to introduce for the second time tonight, Mr. and Mrs.
at this next one by request. They came to party. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. Um, I had a blast DJing. That was awesome. So, um, yeah, this is my this is my messed up club. But they partied. It was cold. You see my breath. Super cold. Um, but we'll catch you guys tomorrow when we come back here again to do another wedding on a Sunday. It's gonna be cold again. See you tomorrow. 
the next day. We back at a friend's farm and it's a lot nicer today. Let me just say it's like 60, 60 degrees out right now. It was literally 30 and under last night, so a lot better today. We have uh, no monogram today, same setup as yesterday. You guys got walked through all that. We're gonna get everything tuned up, ready to go, change and chillax, and we're gonna get this second wedding Sunday on the road. All right guys, there's a couple equipment things that I wanna point out that are like kinda some good quick tips and also just explaining how some stuff works that I didn't do yesterday. First off, these Wash FX2s. As you can see, we basically O-clamp them onto the gravity stance. Now, normally the O-clamps do not actually attach to these poles cleanly. As you can see right here, it doesn't clamp on. So what we do is right here, we take gaff tape, but instead of actually like just making rounds and using a lot of gaff tape, what I do is I kinda crunch it together because really what we're just trying to do is create a friction point for that O-clamp to attach it on. So by doing that, I only have to wrap it around once or twice. I save on gaff tape, which is really expensive. It allows me to clamp the O-clamp onto the actual pole now without it sliding up and down like it is now. So if you guys have never seen this rack before, this is the custom built battery and AC powered ceremony rig, but it also works for the reception. So obviously we have AC power in, but we also have battery backup, or we can just run strictly off battery. We have two Audio Technica 3000 fourth gens, we have a Yamaha six channel mixer down here, and we have the two lapels and the two handhelds sitting here, as well as quarter inch the RCA adapters. And these are good for if you're running videographers that want audio out. So on the Yamaha board, we have quarter inch stereo outs that the videographer could use, or if he's got RCA connections, we just pop these jacks in here, and then he has an RCA out as well. Very handy to pick up some of these to just have laying around some quarter inch the RCA adapters. Now on the back here, we have our aux input, which is RCA input, and we also have our main outs, and these go to the speakers, which I have yet to actually hook up. So there is our main out that is going to our LD Systems Maui 5 Go, which is over there. We run a 100 foot XLR down, across, over, back, and around to there. It's not that hard to set it up. It just makes it a lot easier to run from back here, and I don't trust digital wireless audio enough to run a uh, wireless line to that speaker yet so that's why so just a little background to explain to you guys. So the beauty of the drive rack is I got two zones basically set up. So zone one is the uh, Maui 5 go down there and then zone two is the speakers here. So you guys can hear it's playing down there and then I can turn these speakers on as well. Right here is our zone. So we got the Sennheiser wireless digital plugged in here and plugged in way, way down here. Down uh, there is where the Sennheiser is plugged in. I gotta give a shout out to my boy Nick Spinelli for uh, turning me on to the Sennheiser digital. By far a thousand, a thousand times better than the Alto Stealth system. This thing last night, no dropouts, no nothing, solid all freaking night. And this is actually a decent distance, like probably around probably around 50 feet over there projecting too. So Sennheiser Digital, highly recommend. Also, I realized I didn't compliment or say anything about the TurboSound IP300s we're using. It's different. And what I mean by that is it's not necessarily a point source, so it's not directional. You don't have that like tight beam of sound. It's just like 180 degrees like equal sound in all distances, which is just it's different to me. These things get loud. They they outrun these JBL 15 inch subs. They outrun those subs. People online actually told me that they use them with uh, the VRX 918s that I have. So I'm probably gonna try that out because these things can outrun these 15 inch subs. Turbo Sound IP 300s, they retail I think for like 350 a piece, which is a pretty good deal, especially if you already have subs. But yeah, that's my review. I really like this setup. This is probably gonna be the new uh, system we're gonna be using for weddings and stuff like that. And we'll probably bring gravity stands and do the the wash effects too is like this. I just like it, it looks better. Also, I'm really liking like doing wash lighting from like the side or the back instead of from the DJ thing. It just it just tends to look better when you're on the dance floor. It's just my personal opinion. But we're in the cocktail portion right now and um, yeah, let you guys know if anything interesting or exciting happens, so yeah. Rise from your seats. I need everyone.
everyone to put their hands together, make some noise, scream and shout if you wish. And it is my honor to introduce for the second time tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Craig Turner. down all this up here moving on to our string bulbs and we are done we out we out